Yo, you're listening to episode 161 of the Keto Diet Podcast, and today we're chatting about how to know if you're eating too many carbs versus not enough on your ketogenic diet, how to adjust your carb intakes without throwing yourself out of keto, signs it's time to eat more carbs, and so much more. I'm sitting on the bed in a beautiful rental. It's not that beautiful. It's kind of like dingy, but like whatever. And our dogs are here. They're walking in and out of the room constantly. And we haven't seen them in over three weeks, so I'm just letting them roam around the house. They're like, where's the sailboat? What is happening? I don't like land. Where are we? When are we going adventuring? <laughs> so I'm sorry if you can hear dog tap, 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 taps. But them's the breaks. We're doing it. Um, I wanted to create this episode. And in fact, I'm planning a bunch more other episodes very similar to this, but like a different kind of take on it about carb ups and carb intake on keto, because it's like a really hot topic to just figuring out how many carbs to eat. Like, I feel like we figured out the protein thing, like eat enough till you're full, not a really big deal. And we figured out the fat thing have at it. But with carbs, it's sort of like, how many do I eat? How do I know if I'm eating too much or too little? And I was probably one of the first, in fact, probably the first person to talk about carb ups or cyclical ketosis. I mean, the the bodybuilding world definitely had it down way before I did where they use carbohydrate timing on a ketogenic diet to build muscle. And when I read all those studies and talked to different nutritionists in the space and doctors that were doing it, I definitely thought there was something there. But when I came out to the ketogenic community in 2014 and said, guys, I think we can cycle our carbohydrates. Everyone looked at me like, well, I imagine they looked at me. They didn't really look. They just like sent hate emails and threatened my life and just like weren't very awesome about the whole carb up thing. But now fast forward to 2019 and like people are talking about this carb up thing. And so it's really, really exciting. But there's also a lot of misconception about it and I think people think that there need to be a lot of rules around it. And while I can give you some really great outlines of what I've used, what I haven't used, what's worked, what hasn't worked, ultimately it comes down to how your body responds to it. And some people do the ketogenic diet for like ever and never need a carb up and feel really great and don't feel like they ever need carbs and they eat 20 grams of carbs or less and they feel on top of the world. My body does not like that at all. So if in today's episode, you're like, hmm, I really wish Leanne would have touched on XYZ topic, know that I'm working on another episode. It'll be going live episode 166. So just in a couple of weeks, we're going to be talking more about should you do it? Should you not? And answering common questions, but I'll really, really try to delve deep in today. And if you need even more support with carb ups, a great place to go for that is going to be fat fueled. Uh, You guys can find out more by going to healthfulpursuit.com slash fat fueled. And if you already have that program, I mean, you're set. If you have questions about today's content, you feel like I missed something or you're just struggling with something completely different, head on over to healthfulpursuit.com slash contact and you can ask me and I'll answer your question, hopefully in an upcoming episode. You can catch previous podcast episodes and grab the notes from today's show, which will include all links and resources that I'm sharing by going to ketodietpodcast.com and just look for the show notes for episode 161. I got two cool things for you today. The first is that my upcoming book, Keto for Women, goes live in just a couple of days. I'm like shaking over here. I am so nervous, scared, terrified, but also excited, blown away, proud of myself, all the things. I never ever, like honestly, I never thought in a million years that I'd be writing a women's health book. Like this is not a cookbook. This is like a full on book. It's just crazy. It just blows my mind. It's 416 pages or something nuts. Yeah. 416 pages of like words. (laughs) Ah, yeah, it's crazy. Um, So if you feel like from exterior, everyone says, oh, you have all your stuff figured out. You look like you know all the things. I really don't. And I have no idea what I'm doing most of the time. And I'm always just like, wait, what? I did what? So if you want to pre-order that, there's still time to do so. You lock in the best price of the book. You guarantee to get a copy when it launches. You don't pay until June 18th. So you get a little break there. 
And also, when you pre-order, head to KetoForWomen.com where you can enter to win one of three VIP memberships into Happy Keto Body. This giveaway is open to every single person that pre-orders the book. So KetoForWomen.com, you can enter to win those memberships. It's the first time we've actually given away, probably the first and last time we'll give away Happy Keto Body memberships. So just a really fun way of celebrating and I hope you'll get in on it. Okay, let's do this thing already. Welcome to the Keto Diet Podcast, the show all about keto for women so you can burn fat, balance your hormones, and heal your body. If you're new around these parts, I'm Leanne Vogel. You may know me as the international best-selling author of The Keto Diet and author of the upcoming paperback book, Keto for Women, where I'm showing you how to take charge of the imbalances that are ruling your life so you can discover your happy weight in three easy steps. Or you may know me as the nutritionist that likes dipping pork rinds in avocado oil mayo. I'm so glad you're here with me today, and thanks so much for listening. No carb ups. I prefaced earlier that they do not work for everyone, okay? So, like, if you've been crushing your high-fat, low-carb life, and you love everything about it, and everything's working, please don't change anything. Or like, if you're curious, do it, but don't feel like you need to do this. Okay. So first I'm going to explain, explain rather what a carb up is. A carb up is where you eat a low carb, high fat diet, AKA keto. And then for a period of time, usually I prefer doing it in the evening. You eat more carbs and less fat. Think of it like putting in the carbs, taking out the fat. Now, Yes, there are calculations for this and we'll probably get to them today or maybe we won't. We'll see how far we get in the conversation, but I really, really want you guys to understand if you take anything away from today's episode, it's that a carb up equals put the carbs in, take the fat out. Now, take the fat out, is it like all the fat? No, you can leave some fat in there. It's not like it has to be completely fat free. Why dinner time? Well, There are a bunch of reasons why I recommend having carbs in the evening. You avoid brain fog or a blood sugar spike and energy crash that you'd normally get by having your carbs, say, in the morning. It accelerates weight loss. You'll experience fewer cravings, which lead to better nutrition choices. Your ability to mobilize and burn fat all day long um, by having those carbs at night as opposed to in the morning. You'll improve your leptin sensitivity, which means less hunger the next day. It facilitates fat loss and muscle retention. It increases tryptophan uptake in the brain for functional sleep. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. Okay, so if you want science to know that it's time to do this thing, here are a couple of things, well, like a bunch of things that you could look at as signs that it might be time to practice carb ups. Now, Intertwined in this is like signs of being fat adapted. So a good sign that you're ready to do carb ups is if you're fat adapted. If you've been eating keto and you feel super fat adapted, I'm going to be going through signs to look for that you're fat adapted right after this. If you're feeling really great and you're fat adapted, but maybe your hair is falling out or maybe you're experiencing some of these symptoms, you could give it a try. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Then that's fine. But I think so many of us, especially in this dieting mentality BS, excuse my acronym, we get like this stuck in our head that if we do, if we do a diet a certain way, if we fall off that or adjust it a little bit, it means we've fallen off the wagon and we've gone off plan and we're bad people. And that couldn't be farther from the truth. And I really, 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 did I say really just want to empower you to like do what's best for your body. And so if you're struggling with stuff, you owe it to yourself to change some things, to figure out what's leading to the struggle so that you can feel better. You're here because you want to get a handle on your health. And if you've been keto for any amount of time, you know that glucose management is the key to burning fat. If there's too much glucose partying out in your body, it makes it that much more challenging to burn fat and generate ketones. Wearing a continuous glucose monitor, aka CGM, is the key to unlocking what's going on in your body minute to minute. You'd be amazed at how many foods you thought would have no effect on your blood sugar 
actually do. I was blown away at how volatile my glucose was when I first applied a CGM in 2020. I thought my diet was perfect. By seeing your glucose mapped out moment by moment, you get to see how stress, activity, and food choices make a direct impact on your health and how you feel. CGM is the number one tool I use with my clients when they're needing motivation to clean up their diet. There's nothing quite like seeing in real time what the food you just ate is doing to your body. Daily, I make better choices because I'm wearing a CGM. I started using the NutriSense CGM program in February 2022, and I've been really impressed with how easy it is to use this app. You apply the CGM to your arm, I swear it doesn't hurt, and then connect it to the NutriSense app to show you way more than your glucose level. The app displays your peak, how high your glucose spiked after the meal, stability, how much of a jump your glucose took, recovery, whether or not you recovered to your pre-meal glucose number, delta, the difference between your glucose before the meal and after the meal. And all of this data is summed up with a meal by meal and final daily score so you can track your progress day by day. I could go on and on and on and on about this app, but it's probably better if you just go to NutriSense.io slash KDP and use the code KDP to get 30 dollars off any subscription plan to the CGM program. And your purchase comes with one month of free support from a registered dietitian. Step by step, they show you how to track your data, understand your glucose trends, log meals, see the macro breakdown, and so much more. That's NutriSense.io slash KDP and use the code KDP for $30 off. Okay. You're ready for a carb up when you can say yes to at least three of the following. Now I'm reading from my upcoming book, Keto for Women. It's on page 188. And again, you can find out more details by going to ketoforwomen.com. Okay, the deal is if you say yes to at least three of the following, you're ready for a carb up. You test your ketones and they're higher than 1.5 millimoles per liter for more than five days in a row. Now I preface this like some people never get higher than that because they just can't. Like my husband is one of those people. So take that with a grain of salt. But if you notice that your ketones have been higher than 1.5 millimoles a liter for like five, 10 days, then it's probably a good chance that you're testing positive for ketones. Do you know what I'm saying? You can skip meals without getting angry. It's easy to go three, four, five hours without a snack. You don't get ravenous or crave carbs two to three hours after your last meal. You crave high fat foods over high carb foods. You don't need carbs to push through exercise plateaus. You experience steady energy throughout the day without afternoon crashes. Your thoughts seem clear and more focused. You no longer experience keto flu. You've been practicing strict keto, low carb, high fat intake for more than four weeks. You have been low carb for more than four weeks and have developed binging tendencies. This is a big one, guys. If all you can think about is carbs and you're just like, I want an apple. Please just have the apple. Just cut it up, smell it, enjoy it, sit in the sunshine. Eat that apple, girl. Live your best life. Your hair is falling out on strict keto. You've been practicing keto for a little while and find that you're never hungry. This is not like, if you're not hungry and your appetite has been reduced to nothing, like that's not a good thing, like at all. We should never want to achieve that. You have hit a weight loss plateau. You've been having a hard time sleeping since adopting a strict keto diet. You lift weights one or more times per week, regardless of the duration of your workouts. You enjoy going out for dinner with friends. I mean, who doesn't? And Yes, you can go out and you can eat keto and be all great and eat keto at restaurants, but sometimes a girl just wants a gluten-free pizza or like mashed potatoes with her chicken. You have adrenal dysfunction. You have a thyroid imbalance, specifically hypothyroidism. You're looking to heal and balance your hormones, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, human growth hormone, DHEA. And your exercise regimen can tell you a lot as well. If you're not getting the results you want, can't seem to put on muscle, or can't maintain even a moderate intensity while training, it's time for a carb up. So those are some big signs to watch for. Now, 
A big one for me that's actually not on this list, and maybe it was, or I skipped it, I don't know, but I want to elaborate on being hungry every morning. If you wake up and in the past on keto, you weren't hungry in the morning and you had your fatty coffee and then you went until two o'clock in the afternoon and then you had your little lunch and you were the happiest little person in the world. But all of a sudden you're waking up in the morning and like the fatty coffee isn't doing it and you're really hungry and you're like, what's going on? And then you force yourself to fast and then you're binging because you're not eating enough and it's this whole cycle. Try a carb up and you're welcome. <laughs> so what's happening there is that your leptin and ghrelin is just getting a little bit imbalanced and this can happen on a low carb diet. It's nothing to worry about. It just means like the easiest way to do this is to just have carbs. And uh, previous to this, when I was talking about the benefits of having carbs at night, it actually helps reset your leptin and ghrelin. So the next day you'll wake up and you'll just not be hungry. And ha, you solved the mystery. Another big piece to me and why I choose to have carb ups is because I want to live my life. Like, I think that there are people that eat keto forever and they legit say like, I eat keto and they take pictures of all the keto foods and they quote unquote never cheat. I don't totally know how realistic this is because I am not that type of person. All I can say is that if I was that person and I was taking pictures of all the things, me, myself, personally, I would be lying all of the time because I would be eating carbs, you know, like it's just not practical for me and the goals that I have in my life, what I have that's important to me. And just like, you know, living on a sailboat is a very isolating experience, but it's also very social. And when you find a family or a couple or a group of friends that are sailing on one boat or multiple boats, when you find somebody you really click with, you hang out with them all the time. Like breakfast, lunch, dinner, fishing trips, hiking trips, dinghy trips, snorkeling, everything. And you're spending a lot of time with them eating. And so, you know, if we host dinner at our house or they ask me to bring meals, I definitely always bring keto stuff. But if somebody's made something super special and they're like, look, it's gluten free. I know that you're sensitive to gluten. I made this for you. I'm going to eat it because like it's important to me to connect with people and food is such a huge part of our lives. And I think constantly pushing ourselves to not be hungry to minimize our appetite to nothingness. Like if you don't have an appetite for like months, like your body's not in a good place. That is not a good situation. You want an appetite. And for me, I want to connect with people and I do use food to do that. And so I want to live my life. And that's another reason why I choose carb ups. Now, this isn't a scientific reason. As far as I know, there are no studies on this, but I can guarantee you since I incorporated carb ups and just said like, I'm going to live my best life and I'm going to set the intention to eat keto every day, but I'm not going to stress over this and make it a huge deal. I've become a more balanced person. Another reason I personally practice carb ups is because I have a thyroid imbalance. Now my thyroid has gotten a whole lot better, way better, like momentously better, but I still do find that those carbs are really helpful for just keeping my thyroid symptoms at bay. So those are some of the reasons, those are the signs to watch for. And I actually, like it's sort of part of this conversation and I wanna share this piece with you. Um, even though it's not totally about carb ups, I feel like many of you, if you've listened to the very part in the recording that we are at right now. You might benefit from these two things. The first is that I put together a little free guide that you can get at healthfulpursuit.com slash sample that gives you some weight loss tips and how all of this fits together with carb ups and weight loss. Um, there's a little bit about carb ups in there, but I'm guessing because you're listening to the show and you are curious about carb ups, maybe you're also curious about weight loss. So there's a little guide for you. Again, that's healthfulpursuit.com slash sample. And the next piece to this is that I'm actually going to cut over to a recording that I did a little while back on um, being your best advocate and strengthening the relationship you have with your body. So this is a live recording that I did on Instagram and YouTube, and I read from Keto for Women. I shared some tips on body image stuff. So I just thought it would be nice to end today's episode with that recording. So let's cut over to that recording. It was awesome hanging out with you guys, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. Welcome. Happy Thursday. I forgot what day it was. I 
was having like a great day until I wasn't having a great day. And then I got my hair cut. I love, love, love it. Yes. Oh my gosh. Best birthday present ever. Holla. Hey, Fado. Hey, aloha from Hawaii. One day we'll sail there. One day. <laughs> hey, Grace. Good afternoon. We are going to be chatting all about... What are we going to be chatting about? I wrote it up and I'm going to pin it here in Instagram. Oops, pinned. We got YouTube up here. We got Instagram over here. I'm just going to make the window smaller. I'm going to be reading from my upcoming book, Keto for Women. Pretend I'm holding it right here. It's a gorgeous cover. There's pink. And if you're like, hey, why is Leanne doing all these lives? Well, because I am celebrating the launch of this bad boy that launched April and the launch of Keto for Women, pretending I'm holding it here, that's launching in June. And I'm not able to go on a book tour this go around. There's just so much going on with the books and life and all the things. And I should have turned that light off, but totally forgot. So I'm going to have a halo in this video. And I just thought it would be fun to have these virtual events where I can read to you, I can answer questions, we can hang out, and I'll get to hang out with so many more of you via the internet than in person. So that's the way we're going to rock it. I'm drinking my sparkling water. I probably won't even drink it because I just get so carried away while I'm talking. So I'm going to be reading from pages 217 to about 219 of Keto for Women. If you're like, Keto for Women, a what-a? What is this? It's my newest paperback book coming out June 18th. You guys can find out more by going to ketoforwomen.com. That's where you'll find all pre-order information, including how you can enter to win one of three VIP memberships into my Happy Keto Body program. It's a 12-week video training program for the ladies. And you get lifetime coaching, lifetime group coaching with your membership. So when you pre-order Keto for Women, you lock in the best price. You guarantee, you're guaranteed a copy. You help me a whole bunch. And you get entered to win. That's four things. I know there's five, but whatever. Okay, so... We are going to be chatting all about repairing the relationship that you have with your body. And um, I titled today's video, The Most Important Relationship You Have. And it's so, so, so true. It is so important that we have a relationship with ourselves. And I think a lot of us think that's so silly, but it's really, really not, guys. It's so important that we care for ourselves in whatever way we are able to, like, you know, getting my hair done as a little birthday present to myself. It was a $60 haircut. Wasn't cheap, but I had been planning it. I haven't gotten my haircut since November. So it was like time. And I really, I listened to nice music on my way there. I filled up my water bottle filled with cold water because I love cold water. And I just like enjoyed my drive there and went there, hung out, had a really good conversation, learned something new because I always ask questions and then came home and thought, and I had a nice lunch and I just made a time of it. And you don't need a ton of money or a ton of time in order to take care of yourself and so much more than just self-care. And we're going to be talking about that in a second. So worth it. So cute. Oh, thanks. Hello. Hello guys. Hey, Sarah. Okay. Awesome. Keto flu, impossible fasting symptoms that stop you mid-fast, cravings at any hour of the day, or feeling off after a sweaty workout, these are some of the signs that you're low in electrolytes. When I first started keto, I made all of the mistakes. One of the biggest ones was not supplementing with electrolytes, and still, seven years into keto, I often forget how essential electrolytes are. Honestly, it's easy to forget to take electrolytes because, well, a lot of them don't taste very good or work very well. Enter Element, the most delicious, well balanced electrolyte powder I've personally tried, like ever. Add to water and enjoy any time of day. These electrolytes are salty as they should be, quenching your thirst and hitting the spot. And the best part, 
When you head to drinklmnt.com slash KDP, you'll receive a free Element sample pack. You only pay $5 for shipping. The sample pack includes eight packets of Element that includes two citrus, two raspberry, two orange, and two raw unflavored. Go to drinklmnt.com forward slash KDP for your free sample pack. I love Element and I really think you're going to too. Again, that's drinkelement.com forward slash KDP to get your free sample pack. And if you don't love it, they will refund your $5, no questions asked. Okay, from page 216 to 17 of Keto for Women. Chapter seven, repairing your relationship with your body. You know that woman we'd all like to be, confident, fierce, unapologetic, that woman who walks into a room and it instantly lights up. Notice I didn't say anything about her body. That woman who loves getting dressed in the morning and jumps in front of photo ops, that woman who's too busy dying with laughter, flirting with the cute bartender and hitting the dance floor with her friends to think about her body, how she looks, or what others may think of her. Notice I didn't say anything about her gene size, Fitbit points, or body fat percentage. You are that woman. Deep down inside you, there's a radiant goddess who doesn't let a number on a scale dictate her self-worth. Your journey to find her begins now. So that's the beginning of chapter seven. I'm going to continue reading for a little bit longer. Newsflash, diet alone is not a magic ticket to health. It never will be. Healing your body begins with healing your relationship with your body, learning to respect and accept your body, and then forging ahead with your fresh perspective to make adjustments to your diet and lifestyle with grace. Maybe you think all of this is baloney. I did too. I thought I was just one macro adjustment or another 20 minutes in the gym away from pure happiness. As if happiness were a destination that if I worked hard enough on looking my best, I would reach and all my dreams would come true. This logic is flawed. Life is messy and our bodies keep us guessing always. The only constant is change itself. And when you learn to embrace change in a body you accept and respect, everything is different. Your relationship with your partner massively improves. Confidence becomes your best quality. You care less about what people think. You look at others with love. You eat to live, not live to eat. Moving your body starts to feel good instead of being something you obsess over or feel obligated to do. Your mood improves. You find more things you're passionate about. So this last part of Keto for Women is dedicated to helping you learn to respect and appreciate your body and showing you how to tweak diet and lifestyle factors to support both body and mind. Regardless of where you're currently at in your physical journey, you absolutely must form a new relationship with your body. And that has nothing to do with your macros, ketone levels, or body composition. It has to do with mindset. So that's a section I'm just going to read. Is there a way to tighten my skin on my stomach? Uh, I don't. (laughs) You know, some days where you just don't have an answer. You know, some questions. I don't know of a way. In fact, I know I have a lot of mother friends who are mothers that have loosey goosey skin on their stomach. And I just think like every time I see them in a bathing suit, I'm just like, dude, You gave birth to a child. There there was a child that lived in your belly. (laughs) You grew that baby. And now it's out in the world playing in the sand right now. Like, (laughs) that's crazy. Okay, if you guys want me to keep reading, uh, this is everything I need to hear right now. I know that woman is in me and your encouragement and wisdom is helping to push me to better myself in huge ways. Thank you, Leanne. I'm so glad Keto Works 89. That's awesome. I'll read a little bit more if you guys are cool with it. It starts with kindness. Most of us learn how to be kind to one another early on in life, to share our toys, say hello to our friends, and be mindful of others' feelings. Kindness is about being friendly, generous, and considerate, all qualities we work so hard in our relationships with others and yet so often lack in our relationship with ourselves. Think about passing the kindness you show everyone else on to your body. Be friendly, generous, and considerate to your body in how you treat it and how you connect to it. With body kindness, you accept yourself just as you are right now. 
with body kindness, you can slowly let go of that negative internal voice and treat yourself with compassion instead of shame. With body kindness, you'll put your energy into boosting positive motivation for creating a better life in a way that works for you. You're probably thinking, but if I accept my body the way it is, then I won't be able to change it. I'm here to change my body. Okay, I hear you. Acceptance is certainly counterintuitive. Going against everything we've been conditioned to believe will lead to a healthy and happy life. But let me ask you this. How have your past approaches to weight loss worked out for you? With body kindness, you finally put your body first, honoring it, trusting it, and taking care of it. And I have a sneaking suspicion that the body kindness practices I recommend are much better for your mind and body than anything that you've tried in the past to lose weight. There are no rules for developing body kindness. That's because body kindness should ultimately be a habit and rules don't create habits. Choices do. And really choices and behaviors do. By learning how to make the best choices for yourself, you'll effortlessly build a solid framework of self-love and that will positively change your life. Here are the three pillars of body kindness. Is this your new book? Yeah, Keto for Women, coming out June 18th. You can pre-order at ketoforwomen.com. There's a bunch of pre-order information on there, how to enter to win when you pre-order all the things. All the things. So the three pillars are love, make all choices from a place of love and acceptance. Even if you can't do the love thing, respect. That's what I like to replace that word with. Connect, that's pillar number two. Connect. Check in with your body and respond to its needs. Maybe it's asking for sleep, food, a deep breath, a good laugh, or a mind-blowing orgasm. Number three, care. Fully commit to your self-care rituals, no matter what. Maybe that means going for a daily walk with your favorite music, running a bubble bath for yourself on Tuesdays, going to your favorite yoga class on a Sunday, or spending extra time brushing your hair or even your teeth every morning. Pick one self-care ritual that excites you and commit to it. Make your number one priority and don't let your schedule or other people get in the way of completing it. As you practice, it'll become easier and easier to make time for yourself and your self-care. Your current weight has nothing to do with your ability to practice body kindness. Numbers are just that, numbers. They'll change over time with, uh, for a myriad of reasons. The more you let go of trying to control them, the freer you will become and the less fear will consume you, I promise. When you practice the three, the three pillars of body kindness, you invite into your life self-acceptance, self-compassion, and positive motivation to pursue your deepest desires for a healthy mind and a happy body. I really, really, really loved writing that for Keto for Women. It was one of my, it's my most favorite section of the book. And I hope you enjoyed my reading today. It's about to like completely downpour. I can feel it. My joints are all getting weird. So if the power cuts out or something, it's because it's been stormy here. Okay, I'm going to answer some questions. Uh, is this from the new book? Yes, it's about health, not looks for me. Have gone from diabetes to pre-diabetes. Looking forward to no diabetes. Keto is my life now. I stopped losing weight and I think gain too. I was asked to stop keto for now. Just waiting for my blood work to see how my hormones are. Congrats on the new book. Yay, thank you. Gotta listen to your body. Do what you think is best. So excited for that book, says Sadie. I can't wait. I can't wait for it. I've never felt more connected to my body since keto. I just can tell what I need every day and it's mind blowing. Thanks for sharing all this wisdom with us over the years. You know what? Keto has a magical way of just changing things for all of us and eating enough fat and making sure that we're having fat. It just lights up your brain in a different way than what we have experienced in the past. And it's pretty mind blowing. I've never been able to relax like this while losing weight and loving myself. Cute hair. Thanks. How do you feel about intermittent fasting? I feel good about it if you feel good about it. I do chat about it in Keto for Women. I also chatted about it at length in this book and also in um, Happy Keto Body at happyketobody.com. Steph Dodger. Hey, sister. Hey, girl. Amazing. A sticky hug. I love it. Oh my gosh. Sticky hugs are my favorite now. One year into keto on this end, I sent your first book to at least five other people. Thank you so much, Patrick. That, that's awesome. Thank you so much. 
I believe stress self-care is the biggest piece of the puzzle. You're totally right. So again, on YouTube, like the video is so dark because it is so dark in here. And I'm so sorry. I couldn't foresee that there would be a storm, but at least you can hear me and sort of see my face. Yeah. So I'm really excited that I got to read from Keto for Women. Again, you guys can get all the pre-order information by going to ketoforwomen.com. Not only when you pre-order, do you lock in the best price, you also don't pay until June 18th, and you're also guaranteed a copy when it comes out, and you're entered to win lifetime coaching, keto coaching with myself and Dr. Nina. You guys can find out more by going to ketoforwomen.com. And I'm so happy that one of you, many of you actually recommended that we talk about this topic today. It means so much to me that I have this space where I can talk about bending and flexing with your nutrition from a place of honoring your body and respecting your body. And it's definitely a very thin line between being too strict with a diet and being very undiet like And I've been reading a lot of books lately that have kind of taken me in the direction of really, really trying not to align to any specific eating style, even though I associate myself as being ketogenic and I eat a lot of fat and I very rarely eat a ton of carbs. But by saying I am keto, for me anyways, it doesn't really do me a service at all. It actually feels quite restrictive. And so lately, I would say over the past year or so, I just say, I set the intention every day to eat low carb, high fat, because that's where I feel my body feels best. And that's what my body, you know, when I eat low carb, high fat, I feel the best. My mind feels the best, mostly my mind, honestly, like my brain just feels so much better. I'm so much more of a balanced individual. And that's been really, really good for my marriage, especially my relationship with Kevin has completely transformed since I've started eating fat and also started honoring my body and being confident and setting these intentions instead of being so rigid, like I was horrible to live with. I was, I was very challenging to be married to. And it just, it wasn't my best self at all when I was so strict with everything. And so I've dedicated a whole chapter to keto for women. It keeps on given from page 218 to 238. So 20 whole pages dedicated to all this work to give you guys a good firm understanding of what I'm trying to say. And yeah, thanks so much for hanging out with me, guys. Okay, well, this was a blast. I'm going to get back to recording the podcast. And I hope you guys have a wonderful Thursday. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. Join us again in a couple of days to discover more Keto for Women secrets for your fat-fueled life. The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, recipes, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representations or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program.